Hi, everybody. Welcome back from the break. I'm here to talk to you about cross-functional collaboration. Uh, can we put the first slide up, please? Go back. Uh, the first slide. Yes, that one. Thank you. So I'm Cheryl Conti, as Sarah just told you, and I'm busy. I work a lot of jobs. I just I love working. So uh, right now I have three jobs. One is the co-founder of Fission Strategy. And Fission is a digital agency that specializes in helping the world's nonprofits, foundations, and social enterprises, those that are leading, to use the internet more effectively to create change around the world. So some of our clients include Greenpeace, Earth Justice, Every Town for Gun Safety, Define American for Immigration, Moms Rising, you get the gist. Out of that spun Attentively, which is a startup, it's a lean startup, and it combines big data plus social matching plus enterprise listening, plus marketing automation for awesomeness. It's a big slice of awesome. Uh, two of the Fortune 10 companies uh, are using it, so that's how you know it must be good. And then my third job is as the co-founder with Van Jones of CNN's Crossfire of Yes We Code. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. So how did Attentively get started? We actually bootstrapped it from within uh, our original company, Fission, uh, over 18 months and built a, uh, an MVP, a minimum viable product. Uh, we definitely have used a build, measure, learn cycle uh, to try to improve the product over time. As Sarah mentioned, we've got 12 people there in DC, Boston, Atlanta, and of course me here in San Francisco. And we have three teams essentially, dev, development, customer success, and sales. So I'm gonna tell you a story, huddle, huddle up around the fire. I'll tell you a little story uh, about our user interface redesign. So to date, we have attracted over two million in angel investment, which is a big deal for a female founded company and female tech leads. So in our latest round of funding, we decided to take another look at the user interface. So we have a UX lead, Jordan Bonds, who's great, and she first started by doing individual interviews with every single person at the company. Then we brought everyone together for an in-person group workshop. Jordan then synthesized all of those comments, reported back to folks just to make sure she'd heard everything correctly, and created a roadmap. We executed, we built it, and then we brought everybody back together to just check in, do we meet our goals, what's the next hill, and what have we accomplished? So here are some of the questions that we asked during those individual interviews. It included, you know, what's the, what are the strengths in the current interface? You know, what should we keep? What's missing? If there were one thing that you could change, what would it be? And what are some examples of things that we see other people doing out in the marketplace that we think we might want to use? The results were surprising in a way. Uh, we, because we interviewed uh, every single person, you know, the perspectives from the different teams were pretty different. So for example, the limitations of the interface, the original interface that prevented, that might have prevented some people from renewing were very different from those that might lead someone to sign you know, the contract and join us as a customer in the first place. So an example, integrations. Integrations are a big deal. If you're using Oracle Eloqua or Salesforce, you want to make sure that that plugs in really smoothly with Attentively so you can share data. That's important. For sales, obviously a lot less important for renewals. Similarly, development had a very different perspective. To them, they said, look, all of that, all those bells and whistles sounds great, but there's some underlying infrastructure issues that we should probably fix before we go forward. So that became a prerequisite. We rolled everything back. We actually put new feature development on hold, cleaned up the infrastructure, which actually made everybody happier in the end because now we can move forward together much more nimbly and faster. You know, if uh, somebody says, oh, you know, this client will stay, but only if we make this one tweak to the system, our dev team can get it lickety-split, just like that. 
So you might ask, oh, is that just gathering requirements? Is that just somebody saying, oh, we want this and we want this and we don't want this? I say to you, no. We approach cross-functional collaboration as a way of managing technical risk and market risk, or customer risk as you see it here, but also ego risk. Tech risk, as you know, is, you know, is there enough uh, server capacity? Is it scalable? Market risk is, you know, do people even want to buy this thing in the first place? Right? right? Is this uh, something, a, a problem that we're solving in the market? In our opinion, you get the genius of many minds when you have your dev team thinking about whether or not we're meeting market uh, solutions, and when you have your, say, customer success or sales team thinking about, you know, are we, do we have a patentable algorithm that's you know, hot enough that we can sell it, right? That's where we get our strength from. But Another risk that uh, Teague Hopkins, who's uh, a startup founder and a management coach, has posited is ego risk. And that's where you get tunnel vision. You're so focused on meeting your goals you know, and, and getting to your benchmarks that you create a reality distortion field around yourself. And you really don't know what's happening. And, and for us, taking that time and that was a time-consuming process, right, to, to do these in-depth interviews and get all these different perspectives. But for us, you know, an entrepreneur has to stay out of his or her own way, right, and make sure that you don't think that you have all the answers because you definitely don't. So uh, Sarah told us that we couldn't have any porn in our slides. This is like the opposite of that. These are Lego figures uh, from Star Trek. Uh, the next generation. How many of you have seen some Star Trek thing at some point? You know, raise your hand in the overflow rooms too. Yeah, okay. Thank you, nerds, for, for letting us all know. I am a nerd, much like you. I spent a lot of time watching Star Trek as a kid. And one of my big takeaways as a kid from Star Trek is that, you know, when you're on the bridge of that spaceship, every person has their role. Right? Sulu doesn't do communications. That's Uhura's job, right? Worf doesn't do science. That's Data's job. Jean-Luc Picard probably cannot fly the Starship Enterprise, right? Everybody's got their role. And so you know, together we co-create our adventures. And we can only explore new galaxies if we all work together and hear each other's perspectives in a trust-based, transparent, helpful, for those of you who heard Ben Horowitz, in a helpful and collaborative way. If you bake in cross-functional collaboration into the DNA of your startup, not only can you defeat attacks from Klingons and competitors, but you can go where no one has gone before. So this is where to find me after this. Happy to take any questions that you have. Find me on Twitter, find me on email. And uh, just one mention about uh, my third job, Yes We Code. Uh, one of the things that I know Sarah and Eric feel very strongly about is diversity and making sure that we're bringing as many diverse perspectives together. At Yes We Code, uh, we are helping over 100,000 low opportunity young people of all colors to become high quality coders and technologists because we believe that everybody's got a great idea and that we want you know, this audience, we want everybody in the country to feel like they can come and, and be at a Lean Startup conference with you because our jobs are great, right? Our jobs are awesome. So we're raising uh, $11 million, uh, 10 million of which will go to teach people to code. And you may have heard that the president actually became the first president ever to write a computer program. Um, and that was uh, in part with Yes We Code and one of our partner organizations for the Hour of Code. So we're making it happen both at, you know, for little kids, for big kids like the president, and for big kids like you. Thank you so much.